What's up, Marvelous viewers? Welcome back to our channel. If you love Hellraiser and think you've seen the scariest of the demonic Cenobites, well, think again. As today, we're entering the twisted world of the Lucky Six. A gash of deadly Cenobites handpicked with one aim, destroy the goddess. Stick with us till the end if you want to unravel more. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. Lucky Six Gash, Hell's Deadliest Cenobites Unleashed Within the Hellraiser mythology, the mysterious and terrifying Cenobites are servants of the god Leviathan, ruler of Hell and the Labyrinth. Of the many gashes of Cenobites, there was one elite gash known as the Lucky Six. This gash was no ordinary collection of Cenobites. It was a hand-picked team established for one purpose. But before we continue, let's take a look at what gash means in the Hellraiser universe. In Hellraiser, a gash refers to a team of Cenobites. These gashes operate more or less like tactical units within the hierarchy of Hell, under the mandates set by Leviathan. Such teams are highly specialized, and each member brings his particular skill and ghastly talent to the overall mission. The Cenobites are not only extra-dimensional beings of pain and pleasure, they are also torment agents and religious devotees to Leviathan. Each gash fulfills his purpose in his own horrific way, observing Leviathan's will in the human world and beyond. The formation of the Lucky Six. The Lucky Six gash was distinct though. Other more established Cenobite cults had their formation cemented through the heredity of the flesh from another origin. But the Lucky Six gash came into being through the energies channeled by the Puzzle Chamber, where Mortemam, the goddess of chaos and sister to Leviathan, had lain in prison for millennia, held in check by the cosmic machinations of Leviathan himself. Whereas her followers, the Harrowers, desired to free her from detention and continue the fight against Leviathan and his Cenobites. The Lucky Six gash was Leviathan's response to the Harrowers. When the puzzle chamber was solved, the group was brought forward, and it brought with it a series of elite Cenobites to take on Morton Mom's followers. According to historical accounts, each member of the Lucky Six was once said to be among the General's best soldiers, their skills from life twisted and magnified to serve Leviathan's grand design. The Harrowers and Mortemam. To understand the significance of the Lucky Six, it's crucial to know about their enemies, the Harrowers. The Harrowers are a group of humans pulled from Earth by Mortemam. They were her mortal champions, tasked with defeating Leviathan's soldiers and rescuing their goddess from the puzzle chamber. So as you can see, this was more than just a devotional mission for them. It was very personal. Their war was something more than a struggle between good and evil. It was a war between two cosmic intergalactic powers, espousing thoroughly antagonistic ideologies. Leviathan was order, pain, and control. Olmort and Mom personified chaos, freedom, and rebellion. This makes the battle between the Harrowers and the Lucky Six even more intense and central to a much broader Hellraiser canon. Let's take a look at each member of the Lucky Six more closely, shall we? The Lucky Six Gash Members Merkova Merkova was one of the most pronounced Cenobites within the Hellraiser comics, which means that she was not only a formidable leader, but also held an important rank in Hell's hierarchy. She had a lot to do with the bodies of the stories when the Harrowers were involved. Interestingly, however, she shared an unusual affiliation with Pinhead himself. The two Cenobites were outwardly devoted to each other, something rarely seen among Hell's denizens. This relationship gave a rather emotional dimension to Merkova's character, making her both frightening and somewhat tragic. As the leader of the Lucky Six, Merkova witnessed the call to arms that summoned the team in the first place. The Harrowers had set out on a mission to free the goddess Mortemam, Leviathan's sister and a chaotic force, whose freedom was a direct threat to Leviathan and the Order of Hell. To prevent this, the General, Hell's appointed commander, held a call to arms to witness the solving of the puzzle chamber, which summoned Merkova and her five teammates, Turpish, Cattleskull, Cowboy, Halo Blades, and Fulgar, destined to battle the Harrowers and prevent Mortemam's return. Merkova was in absolute command when the party reached the Egg Museum. One encounter that exemplified Merkova's viciousness was when she threatened to murder Zink, the pet cat belonging to the Harrowers, who was approaching her. However, one of the Harrowers, Winston Gage, used his ability to switch places with Zink, catching Merkova by surprise. After that, in a decisive gesture, Gage amputated her arms by using the Divine Axe, leaving her temporarily incapacitated. The Harrowers began to advance and continued the fray as they pressed their advantage. Martha Mom created a tooting creature named Ovid to help her followers, distracting the Cenobites with its noxious fumes. In the chaos, all but Merkova were soon restrained by divine ropes, wielded by the Harrowers Lucinda and Lavinia. Emboldened by their newfound courage and abilities, the Harrowers dismembered the remaining Cenobites and left Merkova to face their wrath alone. Though she was very resilient, Merkova received a fatal hit when one of the Harrowers, Marty Sevenbirds, stabbed her in the stomach with his divine longsword. Knowing there was no hope of survival, Merkova didn't want to 
finally give up without a fight. In one act of final defiance, Markova kidnapped a heroer named Bunny Benedict and retreated to hell. Eventually, she died in hell, collapsing in Pinhead's arms. The sword from Marty still lodged in her. The grieving Pinhead withdrew the sword to kill her, ultimately giving her relief. His anger and despair fueled his promise of revenge against the heroers, which would only lead to more fighting. Pinhead soon resumed his torture of Bunny in hell with ceaseless pain. Markova's body is also a representation of the grotesque transformation that Cenobites undergo. There is the stitched skeletal snout of a horse on her face, which gives her an otherworldly animalistic appearance. Additionally, horse legs replace her lower legs, and patches of horse hair trail along her arms and at her belt. While most other Cenobites are completely bald, Murkova, in contrast, has a mohawk running straight down the back of her head, adding to her distinctive look. Her leather bondage costume, standard issue for Cenobites, is a bit more revealing than most, enhancing her mix of horror and allure. Cowboy. One of the most mysterious figures in the Lucky Six is Cowboy. Very little is known about his past life, but a lot can be inferred from his silence and ghostly appearance. Called to Earth, Cowboy joined Murkova and the others in fighting against the Harrowers. His formidable strength and stamina were no match for the divine powers of the Harrowers, and he quickly died like four of his other teammates. The physical form of Cowboy is a disturbing reflection of his name. Clad in a black leather cowboy outfit, boots, and a hat atop his blonde hair, he appears as a perverted version of a gunslinger who survived the Wild West. His mouth is grotesquely slashed from cheek to cheek, displaying a sinister grin that reflects his violent past. Small patches of facial hair dot his face, but the most striking feature is the three arrows that pierce through his chest and are embedded in his flesh. This imagery calls back to the legend of the cowboys and their battles with Native Americans. In addition to this ravaged body, cowboys' intestines are ripped apart and metal sheets cut through his torso. Ouch. Halo Blades. One of the more sinister figures associated with Murkova's Lucky Six, Halo Blades was recognized by his defining trait, a deadly halo of blades that formed a circle around his skull. At the Egg Museum, it was Halo Blades who first predicted the arrival of the Harrowers and sounded an alarm to Murkova of the impending attack. His godly intuition proved correct as, with divine arms, the Harrowers came and conducted a ferocious battle with the Lucky Six. Moreover, Mortemam intervened by creating Ovid, a creature meant to boost the morale of the Harrowers Lucinda and Lavinia. Gaseous emissions from Ovid filled the battleground, and the Lucky Six, including Halo Blades, were thrown into disarray. After that, Lucinda and Lavinia Clare, twin harrowers, used duplication tactics and divine lassos to bind them. Despite his deadly halo and menacing presence, Halo Blades, like the others, was outmaneuvered and defeated by the harrowers. Marty Sevenbird's electrocution severely crippled the gang, resulting in Halo Blades' death, along with the rest of the Lucky Six, except Murkova. Halo Blades is easily identified at first glance by his tight black leather suit, yet it is the halo of razors revolving around his head that gives him a characteristic feature of sheer horror. The razor-sharp blades are enough proof that he's the very embodiment of a living tool of suffering and pain. He also has no eyes, making him a silent predator, waiting to pounce upon his prey. Fulgar. Fulgar's dark history began centuries before his time with the Lucky Six. A little boy named Robert Johnson solved the lament configuration in 1620, unintentionally calling Fulgar to life. In a last-ditch effort to save their son, Robert Johnson's parents, Philip and Grace Johnson, struck a bargain with the Cenobite, surrendering their lives in turn for their son's freedom. Fulgar accepted the transaction, but the Johnsons fled to America before he could return to retrieve them, thinking they could escape from the Cenobite. Fulgar didn't forget. A year later, he returned, completing his part of the bargain by abducting Philip and Grace, leaving their house consumed by flames. Not only did he collect his due, but he also marked the remaining Johnson child with the sign of Leviathan, cursing their bloodline. From then on, any member of the Johnson family who reached the age of 25 would be dragged into hell by a Cenobite, where they would become a slave in the fields belonging to Aparius, the beekeeper of hell. After almost 370 years, Fogar was prepared to confront Morten Mom's harrowers when he was gathered with the others in the general's call to arms. Fogar was assigned to follow Markova's lead. Upon Upon arrival at the Egg Museum, Fulgar didn't waste much time proving his cruel nature. He attacked Bunny Benedict, stringing her up with hooked chains, leaving her powerless as a message for the harrowers. With the battle begun, Fulgar encountered Ron Ringwood immediately, and was confident enough in his upper hand to trap him with his own chains. The sadistic Cenobite was ready to castrate Ron, but Vera Weishank foiled the scheme by using her bladed boomerang to cut off one of Fulgar's flaming hands, thus rescuing Ron from his bleak destiny. However, Vera was now in danger. Fulgar shifted his focus 
focused to her, but it was a gift from Mortemam that ultimately brought him to his ruin. With the gift, Vera was able to hurt Falgar, as the Cenobites found her blood and saliva to be acidic. She used her newly acquired ability to spit at him, weakening the once powerful Cenobite and enabling her to escape. In the end, despite Volgar's terrifying presence and power, he fell alongside the rest of the Lucky Six. The most obvious characteristic Fulgar possessed was his flaming hands, and this reflected his role as an instrument of fiery torment. Both commanding and dreadful to behold, his body was clad in the black leather uniform of the Cenobites. It was this power to call upon and command hooked chains, along with his pyromaniacal nature, that made Fulgar such a terrifying foe. Turpus. All the Lucky Six are distinctive, but Turpus stands out in more ways than one when it comes to his looks. He's grotesque, with an aged, worn countenance. Wearing leather robes, he's a pretty grim figure. His head and arms appear to have been stitched into place after being torn off, and his long limbs reach nearly twice the length of his body. Another frightening aspect is the spiky protrusions from his belly, and attached to his belt are the heads of his victims, a grim trophy of the past. While the other Cenobites fought with all their might and fury against the Harrowers, the efforts of Turpus were not very significant significant, making him the least effective of the Lucky Six. When it came time for the final confrontation, he took little action, leaving him in the shadows of his stronger comrades and cementing in everyone's mind that he was the most forgettable of the group. Cattle Skull. Cattle Skull is another fearsome member of the Lucky Six, characterized by his twisted figure and a menacing giant cattle skull lodged in his belly. Two such horns from that gruesome trophy stick out ominously from his body, piercing his neck and adding to his gruesome visage. His black hair frames an ancient face, while the saw blades on his arms reveal brutal craftsmanship typical of the Cenobites. Oddly, in nearly all the media linked to the Hellraiser series, Cattle Skull and Fulgar are subtly conflated, so there always seems to be confusion over who's who. For example, at one point, in death, where is thy sting? Fulgar's name has been mistakenly attributed to Cattle Skull, further muddling these two otherwise distinct characters. Hold up, the story doesn't end here. The Furie, Leviathan's Wrath. Even after the five Lucky Six members were killed, their mission remained unfulfilled. When the bodies of Fulgar, Halo Blades, Cowboy, Turpus, and Cattle Skull arrive back in Hell, Leviathan, enraged at the General for his elite group's demise, looked for a means to take back control of the world. He gave Pinhead the mission to construct an unstoppable monster out of rage and revenge. The body parts of the fallen Lucky Six members were thus formed into Opacus Farage, simply known as the Furie. These parts were then joined together with hooked chains and filled with the essence of wrath, retaliation, and knowledge. When the Furie first appeared, it was a dangerous force. It had a special kind of regeneration ability, wherein whatever harm it took would cause additional limbs or chains to grow out of its body, making it almost unbreakable. The Harrowers were unprepared for this tremendous strength when they faced it, and they found it difficult to fight a creature that seemed to have unending might. The Furie demonstrated its fury in the heat of combat by repelling blows, including precisely catching and returning Vera's bladed boomerang. Its fighting prowess was further shown when it overpowered Howard Harrowers such as Winston Gage and Dublin. Fortunately for the Harrowers, the Furie became confused by Ovid's fumes, allowing Lucinda and Lavinia to use their lasso to steer the beast toward the edge of Mortimam's tomb. When Marty Sevenbirds realized that taking dramatic action was necessary to protect his comrades, the pivotal struggle reached a new level of intensity. He tackled the Furie and electrified himself in a heroic effort that sent it flying down the pit to Mortimam's tomb. In addition to freeing Mortimam, Marty's valiant sacrifice sealed his doom in hell by condemning condemning him to a life of struggle with the Furie. Marvelous verdict. That brings us to the end of this video. In the Hellraiser universe, the Lucky Six is a singular chapter portraying the complexities of the Cenobites and the Harrowers. It all led to a tremendous bloody battle against its opponents, where each one brought its dark past to the battleground with the dreadful powers attached to it. Who's your favorite Lucky Six member? Let us know in the comments below. If you liked this video, please do like and share it with all your friends. I'll see you in the next one.